Today my teaching is in the book of Revelation about the dead church. A dead church. Revelation chapter number 3. And uh, these are the words that Jesus gives to the angel uh, to talk to John. And verse number 1 says, Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write. There is a church in Sardis. This is a practical church which was there. But we get to understand the revelation is for the whole churches. Every Christian. There is something you need to get out of this word. Because the word of God is living and active. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write. This thing saith he that has the seven spirits of God. And that's Jesus. And uh, the Holy Spirit is one. But it manifests in seven different manifestations of the spirit. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of might, spirit of understanding, and so forth. Okay. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, This thing saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, but art dead. I know your works. He's talking to this church. I know your works. And that you have a name, you have a reputation that you live, but you are actually dead. Verse 2, Revelation 3. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. Okay, you have a reputation that you live, that you're Christian, you're a child of God. You have a reputation that you're all that, but you're actually dead. Strengthen those things which remain and are ready to die. Oh, there is something that remains that is ready to die. Okay. And uh, what is that? That is faith, hope, and love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the Bible says, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. And he says the greatest is love. You see? Because faith in God is important. That's, that's, that, that's the connection. You know? He that believeth, he that comes to God must believe. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he exists and that is the rewarder of them that seek him. So, faith in Jesus Christ. You know, by faith we are by grace we are saved through faith. Ephesians 2 from verse number 5. So, we were dead in our sins. God raised us, quickened our spirit which was dead. You see? Quickened our spirit which was dead in sin. Quickened it when you believe Jesus. Your spirit is made alive. So, we are quickened together with Christ at resurrection. When we believe we are connected with the resurrection of Christ, with the resurrected life of Christ. So our spirit which is dead in our sins. You see, we are all dead. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 1, we were all dead in our sins, covered in our sins. The Bible says, God told Adam, that day you sin, you shall die. You see? The Bible says in Romans 5 and verse 19 there, he says, through one man is disobedience, we are all made unrighteous and dead to God, therefore, separated from God who is holy. And therefore, through one man's obedience, Jesus, we become righteous. So he says, you have a reputation that you are alive, but you are dead. So he's talking about their Christianity. You see, the book of James talks about the faith of Christianity, not the faith of salvation. The faith, the saving faith is the faith of Ephesians 2 and verse 9, 8, 9. It says, we have been saved by the gift of God, by faith, by the gift of God, not of ourselves, lest any man boast. So that saving faith is a gift given to man to be saved. Okay. And to each one of us is given a measure of faith, and that is saving faith. Romans 12, the Bible says each one of us is given a measure of faith. Every man is given a measure of faith to believe, ladies and gentlemen, to receive Jesus. So, but James talks about faith without works is dead. James chapter 2. And that is the faith Jesus is talking about here. You have a reputation. That is Christianity. You have a reputation. That is I'm born again. You have a reputation that you are a Christian. That is Christian faith, okay? Not saving faith. Christian faith. That you are saved, that you are alive, but you are dead. So this church has a reputation that they are Christians, but their Christianity is dead because it has no works. The works are not perfect. So this was a sinful church, in other words. But Jesus is not talking about saving faith. That's why he says, strengthen those things that remain. What are the things that remain? 
The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. So faith in Jesus, that one remains. So they were still Christians, but they were dead. Their Christianity, okay, their reputation of Christianity was dead. That's what he says. Be watchful and strengthen those things which remain. This is Revelation 3 verse number 2. Be watchful and strengthen those things which remain. Faith, hope in God, hope in salvation. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. He made known this glorious mystery to the Gentiles, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So these three things that remain is faith, that is saving faith, hope, and that is Jesus, hope in Jesus as our Savior, and love, love for the saints, love for the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, that's important. And remember in Romans 5 and verse uh, 5, the Bible says, Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit. So a Christian can be dead. Their Christianity is dead. Their reputation about salvation is dead. Their conduct, their character is dead. But there are things that remain. That is faith in Jesus. That is saving faith. Not James 2, that Christian faith of works. Mm-mm. That faith can be dead of wax, okay? But their saving faith is still remaining, ladies and gentlemen. And love, love for the brethren, that is paramount. You see, your Christianity can be dead, but your salvation in Christ is alive because of faith in Jesus. You don't have fruits. Such Christians will not have rewards in heaven. Verse number three, remember therefore, how thou hast received and had and hold fast and repent. So Jesus is telling this church, you had the gospel. Remember what you had about salvation, how a Christian should live, how we should bear fruit. Okay, Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, goodness, and patience. Against this, there is no law. And then, you know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 10, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. In other words, born again in Christ Jesus, that we may bear good works, that we may produce good works which God ordained beforehand for the time to come. And this is the time. These are the ages. So after we are born again, not by works, lest any man should boast, we are born again to produce good works after our new creature in Christ. Okay, so the good works don't give you salvation. Okay, good works don't take you to heaven. Good works don't give you salvation. But after you are born again, that new creature has a type of righteousness that longs to produce good works. Glory to God. So Christians can be Christians, but without works. Jesus says you have a reputation that you are living, that you are Christian, but you are dead. But again, to the same church, which has, he has said it is dead, he says, strengthen those, those things which remain and are about to die. So that means their faith in Jesus is about to die if they don't hold on to this faith in Jesus. He says, remember what you received, hold fast and repent. Okay? He says, uh, strengthen those things which remain and are about to die. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come to you as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come to thee. Verse 4. He says, thou hast a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. He that overcomes, you see that? The same shall be clothed in white. I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, before the angels. Okay. This means, he's saying that these Christians can be blotted out of the book of life. How? The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12, if we deny him, he will also deny us. In the four Gospels, Jesus says, he that denies me before men, I will deny him before my father. Okay? He that confesses me before men, I will confess him before my father and the angels. So you can be a Christian and you don't have works, okay? And you're still saved. You don't have good works, but you're still saved because of your saving faith, your faith in Jesus. But if you deny Jesus... And that denying is not the denying of Peter when he said, I don't know him. No, he's talking about denouncing your faith in Jesus, rejecting Jesus. Okay. And you, you, you say, I don't need Jesus. I don't need salvation. Then he will deny you. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.12. If we deny him, he will deny us. Okay. That's the point there. So he says, if you don't repent, if you don't watch, I'll come to you as a thief and the hour you will not know it. And he says, I have a few in Sardis. He mentions a few people in that church. 
okay, who have not defiled their garments. That means this church had a problem of sin. They were walking in sin. But some of these people, they had not defiled their garments, and so they were putting on white. He says, uh, they will walk with me in white, and that is righteousness, for they are worthy, okay. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white. Now he talks to these people. He said, you have a reputation that you are alive, but you are dead. Okay. He says, to you, he that overcomes, okay, I will give him a white garment and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and the angels. So a Christian, their name can be blotted out only if what remains, and that is saving faith is dead hope in christ is dead love for the saints is dead ladies and gentlemen the bible says in hebrews 6 and verse number 20 god is not unjust to forget your labor of love you have showed towards his name and that you minister to other so our love for the saints is very important to prove that you are a christian okay and our faith saving faith in jesus is very important for you to remain a christian ladies and gentlemen so that's what the bible is all about to a dead church and i finish by telling you ladies and gentlemen the bible say in in john 15 jesus says a man who does not abide in me is like a branch okay which is cut off remember jesus in john 15 says i am the vine i am the true vine and you are the branches you my disciples you my believers my followers you are the branches he says a branch that does not abide in me okay the emphasis is not that you have to bear fruit. let me read that scripture and you understand what i'm talking about john 15 and verse number six he says if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered okay and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt okay so jesus talks about bearing fruit but here in verse six he says no you may be a branch you don't have fruits, okay. But if a man does not abide in me, he's like a branch. So a Christian should remain in Jesus, not denouncing your faith in Jesus. Some of you are struggling with habits. Some of you are struggling with sin. Some of you are believing God to change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as your faith is in Jesus, anything can change. With God, all things are possible. There are people even in the Bible who struggled with habits. Peter denied Jesus three times. But when Jesus comes after resurrection and said, do you love me? He says, I love you, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Your faith should not die. Your Christian faith should remain. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you are lost, he will still find you. He's the great shepherd who will find you, ladies and gentlemen. And I came to tell you, such a Christian can win. You can win your sin. You can win your trouble. And God still loves you. Because he says to this church, he that overcomes, I will give him a white linen to walk with me. Ladies and gentlemen, but in John 15 verse 6 says, if a man does not abide in me, he's like a branch which is cut off. You see, you are cut off from salvation. In other words, your name is blotted out of the book of life. But once you are a Christian, he's not talking about living in sin and then you lose salvation. No, he's talking about denouncing Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, so we have to abide in Jesus. Okay, because that man who does not abide in him is like a branch which is cut off which is withered that means your salvation is dead your name is blotted out of the book of life is withered okay and men gather them okay and cast them into the fire and that's the lake of fire and they are burnt so christians are going to heaven because of their faith in jesus not because of their works but your works are important ladies and gentlemen so you can have a reputation that you are a christian but you are dead and that is christian faith of works charity works to help others all right and then you can also be a christian but because you denounce jesus that means you are going to face the lake of fire your name is blotted out of the book of life ladies and gentlemen but my encouragement today is not that you live a christian life which is fruitless my encouragement as i conclude is that you will bear fruit for the kingdom of god love people forgive you know unforgiveness is deadly Unforgiveness will lead people to the lake of fire. Why? The Bible says in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray, we say, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That is the love God showed mankind. That while we are yet sinners, 
you know, Romans 5, 8. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were forgiven, not because we did good, but because we needed forgiveness. So people need to be forgiven. People need to be loved. And Jesus said in John 15, love one another even as I have loved you. Extend this love. So that's why love is very important. Faith, hope, and love. Those three things remain, ladies and gentlemen. So he was talking about the three things that remain. Saving faith, hope, who is Jesus, in you, and love for the saints, ladies and gentlemen. So today I want to encourage you. If you are struggling with sin, believe God to help you. Many of you, you are Christians. You don't have good works. You know, you walk in jealousy, anger, bitterness, strife everywhere, striving with people, okay? I pray that God will give you the heart of love, you know? You are struggling to love people. The Bible says love is poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5. 5. So, depending on the Holy Spirit, you can love again. You can forgive again. You can be profitable in your community, profitable in your family, profitable where you are. So that people will see that really you are a Christian, you know, when you are around them. They will benefit from your Christianity. That's why Jesus wants you to live again. 